Not mad, but menacing. You're listening to chilling evidence from the mouths of three wiral mugroom lobsters. Police had opened a door in the wall of gang silence, but they needed more. To get it, they put sophisticated bugs in these cells at the Gisborne Police Station and started listening. Words that put two mobsters away for the execution of Henry Waihippi from Wairau's Black Power Gang. The mob calls them niggers. We have to lay in the We have to lay We don't need this thing. They stand six feet below us, dog. Today, Jeremy Hatley was jailed for murder and conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. Ken Takahu jailed for manslaughter and conspiracy. Then there's the case of Wairau mob leader, Rangi Bags Tanati. Well, he beat the murder charge. The police's key witness, a junior gang member who was going to say the killings were orders, backed off, changed his story, couldn't remember. Who gave those orders? Bags Tamati. So instead, Tamati was sent to jail today for conspiring to pervert the course of justice by threatening the key witness. Do you think he was intimidated? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> it was not the first time Bags Tamati has faced a murder charge. He was charged uh, after a murder in Wairau in 1989, along with 16 others. He was acquitted, along with the 16 others. Fourteen years later, Tamati's at the heart of yet another Wairau gang killing. The spark? A huge brawl outside the Wairau courthouse where the mob's outmuscled by its bitter enemy, Black Power. Tamati orders the mob back to their HQ. Listening to police radio, he discovers a Black Power convoy is heading home. The mob sets a cold-blooded ambush in broad daylight on a state highway. The two shooters have come from the Mongrel Mob headquarters over here, about 100 metres away, and they've come through the paddock, and they've hidden themselves in this block just in here. Henry Whitehappy was uh, leaning out, or partially leaning out of the back window of that van. As the van is driven past, they just started shooting. Right through the heart. Dead set in the middle of his chest. Armed police swarmed into Wairau and closed down the mob pad. Gisborne detectives locked up dozens of Black Power and Mongrel Mob members. For the first time, a court allowed police to bug those cells and later use the tapes as evidence. Frightening stuff. To hear these people talk, there's no remorse. There's a lot of laughter. A lot of joking. That's the murderer, Jeremy Hatley, sniggering about killing Henry Waihappy. There were times in the cells that they were, where they were very gung-ho. Two families, all Two families that keep the niggas in There were other times when they were, yes, they were scared. They were worried about what could happen to them in respect of a murder charge. Police listen and learn. Two of them talked about the killing itself. Um, and that led us to finding one of the firearms because they told, they told us where they'd hidden one of the firearms. So the police had their tapes and their key witness. Then the mob got to work. Could only own them and feed them to the pigs. You can go in a matter of half an hour. Oh, did it. 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 Oh
Not surprisingly, the witness started getting cold feet. After they became aware that we had information from a witness, they spoke at length about what they were going to do to that witness. And that varied from killing him, bashing him, going through his family. And that's why he didn't give the same evidence again. Well, he came up with a completely different story at the trial. So has anything changed in Wairua over 20 years? Maybe not if you hear what Bags Tamati had to say in 1984. I don't think they're getting intimidated because uh, if you go to the courthouse, you can see the amount of mob members that are gained their tail. There's three witnesses and, and there's no intimidation. The mobsters said the cell talk was just gang members shooting the breeze. But police say by intimidating witnesses, gang members sometimes literally get away with murder. There's a whole spectrum from killing witnesses right through to getting them on site. I wouldn't say it's common, but it does happen. People being harassed, bashed, coerced. Because it strikes at the very heart of the justice system, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. Hence the charge of perverting the course of justice.